Hey guys, um, I'm going to put out a couple of videos this afternoon. Um, this one's about the prodigal son experience. Okay, and I heard a preacher one time say the things that you walk through and you go through, that's because God's giving authority in that area. So, if you had cancer and you go to the hospital and you've survived from it, people that are having can have cancer are going to be a little bit more likely to listen to you. If you haven't had it, you, you know, or if you haven't been to prison, if you've been to prison, you know, the list could go on and on. <clears throat> Mine was that I was a prodigal son, guys. Mad as heck at God for something I did, most of it, honestly, but didn't see it that way. It took years to figure it out. So I really get the grace peace, guys. I get the anger peace of God about this, but I want to get into this message and tell you what took place. My wife and I were talking about this. We all know the scriptures. Not all of us, but hopefully, but I mean, hopefully we all do, but repentance falls in here as one of the keys. We, we know the story, the prodigal son, he, you know, basically stole all the inheritance, took all the money and ran. Hurt his dad, hurt his brother, defamed just a lot of bad stuff. Went off a riotous living. Nowadays, it'd be real riotous, but, you know, what people are doing, but that was pretty riotous, too. I'm sure there was a lot of stuff. Living in a hog pen. They had to steal the food. Not, they didn't give it to him. Nobody gave it to him. He just didn't, was stealing it. Pig slop. Came to himself. He had to repent. Change his heart. He went to church there to walk him through it. He had to repent to 18,000 different people. He had to repent to God. Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. Well, we do today. I mean, that has been relevant back then, but it was, it is, and it wasn't. But he still had to do the, he still had to repent. And then he had to repent to his father. But this is where I'm getting to, guys. Long journey, long way off, full of sin. It says it was a long journey, a far off land. The father kept looking for him, knowing his son was going to come home one day. He just knew that in his heart. You probably look for him often, guys. Broken hearted. The son pretty much trashed him, guys. Dist dissed him pretty bad. He was coming to the back to the father's house. You got to hear this point, guys. It's very, very crucial. Father looked out and saw him. He ran to him. That's not my point. Just bear with me. Ran to him. And the son was like, man, I'm just going to grovel. I'm living, you know, I'm living with the servants. I'm just, you know, man. Thought he was just lower than a piece of dirt, dog poop. And the reality of it was, he probably was, guys, he was. But he's standing there before the father, and what did he do? This is this is my point. There's more to this whole story. You know the story. But what did he do? He put the robe on him, the best he had. Not a hand-me-down, not a moth-eaten, you know. He didn't have conditions. You can come home, but you got to live in the shed. How are you going to pay us back? You really destroyed our name. You're kind of a scumbag. All that's true. That's not how the father looked at him. That was his son. Who once was dead. Everybody thought he was dead or didn't know, but now he's alive. And he put his best on him. Would you do that for the homeless people or for even a friend or 
No, you tell him to go take a shower first. He had pig food probably still stuck in his teeth. He could look like a pig, smell like a pig, act like a pig. For all intents and purposes, he was a pig. Pig-headed. But that's not how the Father still saw him. That's not how God sees you. But it's scriptural, guys. They overcame by the word of their testimony. He, he has a, a robe of righteousness for us, guys, dipped in the blood of the Lamb. Tailor fit for you and me. And why does he put a robe on? That pig-headed kid, dirty, unclean in the natural, I'm sure there was no more towels, no, I mean, and barely clean in his heart. He did change and repented, but there still was probably some stuff there. Same with Jesus. That's the whole point of Jesus and the role of righteousness. The dirt was still there. But the Father wanted to see the people to see the righteousness. Jesus puts a robe on us to make us pure and white. And the sin's still there, guys. Why does he want to cover it up? Because God doesn't want to see us in our sin as a sinful person. He wants to see us as his sons, righteous, pure, clean, and holy. Revelations and it's on other places too. I'm sorry I didn't get the scriptures. I had so much other stuff going on today, and plus a lot of things some natural, some spiritual. So, normally I've got scriptures today. I don't, you'll have to kind of look them up yourself. That was tailor made, and he's got a robe for you and me. He's just saying, come on, just like you are. The world's demanding, fact checkers, who's right, who's wrong. Uh, and I got caught into that guy posting garbage. One person, one doctor, you know, just all the stuff that's going on, guys. And that's my next message, but this one's come on home. Read my story about Precious Come Home. And that's what he wants us to do. How much more precious are you? I got a dog named Precious. Read the story. It's on the YouTube. If you don't know what, you can email me at jesusalive at gmail.com. You can get it. He wants his children back. Personal relationship. I don't care how dirty and messy you are. That's one of my messages. He doesn't want your wealth and fame. He wants your guilt and shame. Because how is he going to set you free? How is the Holy Ghost going to set you free if you won't let him into those dark, cavernous, dirty spots? Some of them are more than spots, guys. I had a few of them. Some, you know, streets, houses, whatever. You got it locked up with 18,000 padlocks on it and it's buried under a nuclear bunker. No one's getting in. You won't even go there. That's where he wants to go. That's the repentance piece. Here I am, God. Man, I really screwed this up. That's the beauty of the repentance piece, guys. You want to be clean? A son? Righteous? Holy and acceptable? Give it up. All of it. Can't hide none of it. Bury none of it. All these people that do all this, and I'm not knocking them, because some of them really probably do have good intent, but all this inner healing stuff, it may help, and it may hurt. Be worse than, in, you know, that medicine, like the salon of medicines, the side effects. Okay, guys, I don't know, but I do know one that really wants to get to the bottom of this of your hurt and pain, shame, guilt, 
condemnation, brokenness. We've all got it, guys. Don't, it's, man, this is not a game anymore, guys. Look around. The world's going to hell in a handbasket right before our very eyes. Pick one. You don't even have to believe in God to see that this is just coming to some kind of conclusion. It's either going to get real ugly real fast, or God's going to have to intervene, which he is in a lot of people's lives already. I've got some miraculous things. If you just knew the swamp that I'm in and been and walking through, I will share that, but that's not for today's message. This is the prodigal son message. This is about you. If you're a prodigal son or daughter, come on home. If it's a demand, it's from the devil. If it's a calling, an election, and just he just wants you to come just as you are. Like I said, that kid was pig-headed, pig food, pig pig smelling, was a pig. We're dirty and undone. I will end with this, guys, okay? I don't know why, but, well, yeah, I will, but anyhow, um, come on. That's what he wants you to do. Come as you are. How are you going to get cleaned up if you're hiding in a cave or you're hiding in your sin or you're hiding this and that and, you know, come to church and everything's okay? Nowadays, you can't go to church. Different places you can and can't and all that other surreal garbage and stuff. Won't go there. Come to him. That's the beauty of the cross. And let him wash you clean and white as snow and put a clean robe on you, the best he's got. Which was a robe dipped in the blood of the lamb, his son, his plan for mankind. These are good messages, guys. Even the ones I got about that don't seem like they're good. Grace? His grace is sufficient. You're still here, aren't you? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. I don't know how much longer this grace is going to last, guys. And neither do you. There's many people in the hospital right now. Some of them are drawing their last breath even. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not, this is not a fear message. You know, you're going to die tomorrow or you're going to get the corona bug or virus, which we've idolized and has become a god that it's not. It's a god, all right? It's a god in this world. I won't go down that soapbox. Not even soapbox. Part of my next message. He wants you to come home, guys. Come on, you know, come on. I'm gonna end with this, okay? And I don't know why. I don't know how it ties, I kinda know how it ties in, but. I was praying one day, and the Lord showed me a guy in a polished suit, really sharp suit. Like, you know, you can tell a cheap suit from a really nice one. This was a really nice one. The shirt was really nice, clean, white, pure, unwrinkled you know, cut well on the man, polished tie, really nice suit. You could tell it wasn't a, you know, a hundred dollar suit or two hundred dollars suit. It was a very nice suit. And the guy was looking down at it, how beautiful everything was, how good it looked. And then it was a vision, but I stepped back and I stepped back, I saw the entire man. Not trying to be crude here, guys, but he was butt naked from the waist down down. That's us, guys, naked and undone. He was telling me that that's how the church sees itself. They're naked and undone. Their behinds hanging out, guys. Sorry for the graphics. Pray for me. Maybe I need to repent later. I don't know, guys, but I'm just telling you what I saw. He wants us to come home. And he wants to go into those secret places. 
You know where they are, guys, in your life. Sin is sin. Whether it's lying, oh, to, you know, we, we label some of them worse than others. The abortion, the, the, the gay movement, all that stuff. The murder. Look at Paul. He was Saul. Don't you think that dude had a little bit of baggage? He murdered people, a lot of people, women and children, innocent people. Don't you think his heart was a little bit tore up? towards God, why would you, man, that's a pretty mixed up bag, guys, sin is sin, lying on your taxes, or your kids, or to your wife, or whatever, an affair, or whatever, pick one, guys, plenty of dirt, we're all kind of guilty of something, but he wants to put that robe on you of righteousness, why? God to love the world, all the world. All lives matter. Even those little babies that don't get the chance to get born because they don't have a voice. Even if you were the one that took their life. Because yeah, that's what happened. He took their life. And it's a sin. But it's not, not forgivable. Look at my video of how God sees it. America concerning abortion. We dropped the ball, guys. We're not looking at it through our father's eyes. Like I said, sin is sin. Dirt is dirt. Pig food or not. Pig headed, sloppy, whatever. It's all dirt and ugly. In God's sight. And that's why he wants to put a robe of righteousness in you, but you're not gonna get there. Unless you really repent and truly ask for forgiveness and truly just come as you are and here I am, God. How's he going to clean you up? How are you going to... If your kids get dirty and they go hide at the neighbors or behind the house or in the bushes or whatever, how are they going to get clean? How are you going to shower them? How are you going to... You don't even know where they are. That's what happens when we hide this junk in our heart. I had a preacher say, I'm going to end with this. Hello, his hand coming in to our heart, and God wants it to go out, but we got blockage. Something's blocking what He's doing, wanting to do with us, through us, for us. It's blocked here. Ah, oh, well, you know, and there's some really tough. You know, tough preachers out there. One of them, I'm just going to put a plug in for him. I don't know why. He's been doing it off and on. Look him up on Facebook. David Sellers. I've got several others that are highlighted. I don't think he's going to mind at all. He's a street preacher, guys. There's a reason why, too. And one day I'll get in this message, but he preaches in front of a Walmart. A lot. preaches repentance hard I cut my teeth in Pentecostal movement for 10 years a holiness movement for at least 10 years I heard plenty of hellfire and brimstone messages a bunch of them guys you wore earrings you're going to hell you have a mustache you have one foot and a banana peel and the other one and you were just you know man you were going to hell fast I heard plenty of them it's kind of like the Jesus police on military steroids. But listen to his messages, guys. They're good, for one. The band of is very, very eminent about that. And two, that's why it says, try the spirit to see if it's the spirit of the Lord. Listen to his heart. Or look at his heart in it, guys. He's got a good heart might seem a little harsh and some people need that harshness some don't you know so whatever your vessel are he's just he, that's, that's the vessel he is and he's i don't think he can change god, god doesn't want to change for one but we've got to repent i'm gonna end with this because this is a big thing we've got to repent have you i have i started doing this have you gone to any of your local cops? And I'm cop, they, they're at the store, all over the store now because of so much threats and security. Now we need them. 
Nobody wants to get a speeding ticket or anything. They don't want, you don't like them then, but if you call 911, you're gonna wanna show up. I went to two of them so far that were highlighted. One was a pretty big cop at the store, you know, big tough guy looking, you know, he didn't look like a marshmallow pushover. And I told him, I said, you know what I told him? I said, I, am, I said, I'm praying for you guys all the time. I said, I just wanted to tell you as an American that I'm sorry we threw you under the bus, but yet you still show up. That thin blue line just got a little bit thinner, guys. Would you want to be a cop? The way we were treating them. We're all, you know, I didn't do it. A lot of us didn't do it. But we're still got some guilt on us, guilt on us and some shame and stuff on us because we've allowed it to happen. Kind of a do nothing. So I can, there's things we can do, but I go to him and tell him, you know, he was, he was a big guy. I could see tears in his eyes. He said, it's really tough. To still show up. That's kind of like us though right now too, guys, in the Christian world. Are you still going to show up? What if God doesn't change things? Meshach said that in your bed and go, what if he doesn't heal you? What if he doesn't... What if he doesn't? But yet we know he's still able. Quit looking for all these miracles, guys. And just come back home. Love you guys. Uh, talk to you soon.